Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Dassault's Aviation rolls out first Falcon 5X. India's pilot certification standards are in question. The City of Phoenix sues the FAA. As we were finishing this episode of Airborne, some late breaking news reached us. ANN editor in chief Jim Campbell sent us the following report. Thanks, Brian. Hi, folks. Well, this is one of those mornings when uh, aviation journalism, normally a, a fun and interesting job, just plain, well, sucks. We regret to confirm that Sonic's aircraft CEO, Jeremy Manette, and one other person as yet identified but associated with Sonic's, have perished in a accident on the east side of an Oshkosh runway after their Sonics November 123 Sierra X-ray, a sport acro, went down in a group of parked military vehicles owned by Oshkosh Corp. We're not quite sure, of course, what's happened. There will be an investigation. Listen to the ATC tapes yesterday. Jeremy sounded upbeat, was uh, trying to be helpful to the local tower guys, telling them, you know, whatever uh, whatever was convenient for them was fine for him for takeoff, but no other information outside of the tower recognizing the fact that they'd gotten a 911 call. This is one of those times when the industry shows its true humanity, pulls together. I've personally experienced how much love and support there is in this industry when tragedy strikes one of our best and brightest. And hopefully the Manette family will get the love and support that uh, they deserve for a time like this. We will report as time goes on, as soon as we have information. Sonic's aircraft has been, without question, an extraordinary force in the sport aviation universe, and it is our greatest hope that they will continue to do so. But in the meantime, for John and Betty, Jeremy's parents, his wife, his sons, all we can do is send our love and support and our prayers. And we will keep you all up to date as uh, real evidence eventually is revealed as to what occurred. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Dassault Aviation lifted the veil yesterday on the highly anticipated Falcon 5X, which they say establishes a new benchmark in the large cabin, long-range business aviation market, and the fact that it looks really cool doesn't hurt at all. Presented at Dassault's bordeaux Marignac Final Assembly Facility before an audience of 400 customers, operators, suppliers, and certification authority representatives, Dassault says the 5X will offer the largest cabin cross-section of any purpose-built business jet. Dassault's Eric Trappier said in part, quote, The Falcon 5X was designed to answer operator demand for an aircraft in the 5,000 nautical mile range that could provide more space and comfort than existing large-body jets while combining the handling qualities, the low-speed performance, and the operating economics, end quote. Other new features include a redesigned cockpit, equipped with a third generation of Dassault's Easy Flight Deck and engine health monitoring systems. Testing of the Falcon 5X's Silvercrest engine is also progressing, and the aircraft's maiden flight is anticipated before the end of summer. India is reportedly granting pilot certificates to people with less than an hour's training, according to court documents and interviews conducted with pilots, regulators, and others. It is reported that in one case, an Indian national was given a subsidy by the Indian government worth the equivalent of $44,000 to learn to fly commercial jets. He says he has a certificate showing he has 360 hours of training, but it was issued after he had sat in the co-pilot seat for about 35 minutes. Reports indicate that it is common to pad log books and log flying time in aircraft that are not even airworthy. Government officials reported that some schools have been shut down or suspended because of falsified records. The Director General of Civil Aviation said in April that it would be conducting a new audit and require, quote, recertification of all flying schools, end quote. After the break, NextGen brings noise problems to Phoenix. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. 
Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The city of Phoenix, Arizona has filed a lawsuit against the FAA in an effort to resolve noise issues that have cropped up after the agency rerouted airplanes departing from and arriving at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. The new routes were put in place last September and are part of the next-gen changes designed to reduce fuel consumption and provide more direct routing in and out of airports. Mayor Greg Stanton says that the city has tried to work with the FAA on the noise issue, but the agency has not proposed any meaningful changes. Stanton said the city was left with no option but to sue. It is reported that when the FAA did say it would support some of the city's proposed solutions, that it would take over a year to place these solutions into operation. The city manager said that the city has spent hundreds of millions of dollars on noise mitigation efforts, and the FAA's proposed solutions do not do enough to compensate the city for its expenditures. The FAA would not comment on pending litigation. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. One of the, the things that uh, we talked about as a board is you know, what, what is most important for this conference? What should be some of the things that are being discussed? And I think for me... In this video, EAA's Jack Pelton speaks at the Redbird Migration 2014. He addresses the issues of success in the training business and relates them to his experiences and how to make businesses grow stronger through change and risk. Search Jack Pelton Redbird Migration on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Carpenter Avionics to perform Smyrna Air Center's avionics business. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX100 and ATX100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Nashville, Tennessee-based Carpenter Avionics has acquired the avionics business unit of Smyrna Air Center, an FAA-approved maintenance and repair organization. The companies will partner as Carpenter Avionics becomes the avionics service provider for Smyrna Air Center. Two aircraft in Alba Adriatica on Italy's east coast collided in mid-air last Sunday, resulting in the fatal injury of one of the pilots. One aircraft broke up in flight while the other ditched in a shallow water near a populated beach. 
A quadcopter UAV became entangled in 115,000 volt power lines 120 feet above the ground. The cost to remove the UAV was about $35,000. The owner has not been found, but could be liable for the cost and possible FAA violation. The Department of Homeland Security is negotiating security issues with foreign airports. Expanded air preclearance operations may begin in 10 countries for U.S. travelers. Approved travelers would be vetted in the departure country for rapid handling in the U.S. The FAA has proposed a $70,000 civil penalty against the University of Wisconsin-Madison for allegedly violating hazardous materials regulations. It is alleged that a university official was carrying undeclared hazardous materials in checked baggage. Airline personnel discovered the shipment. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. Nearly 129 years after the Statue of Liberty was officially gifted to the United States from the people of France, the France-based Breitling jet team took to the skies for a spectacular flight around Lady Liberty last weekend. The team arrived stateside for the first time this year to embark on their first ever American tour, comprised of nearly 20 air shows across the U.S. and Canada. Made up of seven L-39C Albatross jets, the Breitling jet team is the world's largest professional civilian flight team performing in jets. After circling Lady Liberty, the team also added some other New York landmarks to their flyby. Breitling jet team leader Jacques Bautelon said in part, quote, it was a privilege to experience the flight over the Manhattan skyline. To fly there, it was something truly breathtaking, end quote. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.